Israelis learned of President Obama's victory over their morning cup of coffee and many expressed worries about what it will mean for the future. At the gas station where he works, Mohammed Jelani, a 43-year-old Arab president of East Jerusalem, expressed the view that although Obama didn't accomplish anything substantial related to peace in the Middle East during his first four years, he hopes the president will begin to pressure both Israelis and Palestinians to sit down together and negotiate. That's a role the American president can and should play. Seated behind the counter of the busy grocery store where he works the morning shift, Lair Batnin, 20, said that despite the widespread Israeli perception that Obama has been too soft on Iran, he's always had Israel's back. With the U.S. elections over, he said, now the U.S. and Israel need to find a way to get rid of Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and prevent Iran from developing a nuclear bomb. Watching Obama's victory speech on his smartphone as it was broadcast live on Israeli TV, Madhat Siad, a 33-year-old Palestinian Jerusalem resident originally from the West Bank, insisted that Obama's measured outlook could be the key to Middle East peace. Siad, who owns a sandwich shop in predominantly Jewish West Jerusalem, wants Obama to continue the government's economic sanctions against Iran, whose leaders, Siad said, are liars who are looking for a fight. The sanctions seem to be having a real effect on the Iranian economy, so a diplomatic solution may be possible. I don't support military action. I want peace, not war. Watching Obama speech with Siad, Gadi Sari, a 54-year-old disabled Israeli army vet, expressed disappointment over Obama's win over Republican Mitt Romney. I wanted Romney to win. Obama hasn't done enough to ensure Israel's security against Iran's threat and, if you look at the war raging in Syria, he hasn't brought even the semblance of peace to the Middle East. If the U.S. and other nations succeed in derailing Iran's nuclear program, the Middle East would be a quieter, safer place, Sari said. Daniel Lang, an American expatriate from Chicago, said, I am afraid that Obama will apply additional force on Israel to strike a peace agreement in order to satisfy the Arab world. He has shown to be unfriendly to Israel and it will only get worse, said Lang, who lives in Hymenim in what the U.S. calls the West Bank. He worried that the stature of the U.S. aid has eroded in the eyes of the world, and that the erosion will continue. Hopefully, the U.S. can continue to weather the storm and make the rebound down the road, he said. The major issue here is what Obama will do about Iran's nuclear program, which has been growing under Obama and which sanctions applied by the USA and others have not been able to stop. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has pleaded with Obama to set a red line on when military action against Iran must be considered. Israeli Deputy Speaker Danny Dannon, a member of Netanyahu's Likud party, expressed the hope that Obama will reset his course relating to Israel and our region for the next four years. Rather than dictating bill advised policies that endanger the well-being of America's only true ally in the Middle East, now is the time for President Obama to return to the wise and time-honored policy of zero daylight between our respective nations, he said. Bannon said Obama was wasting time on housing zoning laws in Israel, the reference to the building of houses for Jews on land that Palestinians say is theirs. Now is the time for our two nations to come together to combat the greatest threat to freedom in our time. Bannon noted that in his first term, Obama has not visited Israel. I call on the president, who has already visited so many of our neighbors here in the Middle East, to finally visit Israel, thereby sending a strong and visible message to everyone about the deep and meaningful relationship between the U.S. and Israel.